Now, I saw a few people get themselves into a bit of a pickle about this lately, so I'm going to kind of break it down as simply as I can. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically deny databases from being visible to any other user than the database owner. Now, it's very important in order to do this. First of all, you need to deny view to public so that public cannot view every database. Now, to fulfill our test criteria here, we're going to create two databases and a login for each. So we're going to create a two users. So we have our two DBs and we just do a quick refresh. We should also have our two users. Straightforward, simple so far. Now, this is usually the part where people start to go wrong. So what we're going to go ahead is use the SP add role members and make DB owners for these particular users. So we're just going to go ahead and execute that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and log in as one of those users so that we can confirm that when we view the database or look at the, at the database that we're able to basically see it in the list. Now I've already forgotten the password so I'm just going to scroll quickly up, copy this into clipboard and then connect. So what we've got is we're logging in as user B and user B you can see currently can see nothing. So user B actually can't see database B, which is what we want them to see, despite having the role assigned. Now, you've got to ask the question, what went wrong? Now, we can actually look at this very simply. If we look at the user, we can see that the user is created and it has an alias and all is there, but it's a user and it has a role called DB owner but that role can actually be held by many people without meaning that it's the database owner. Database owner, it does not mean the same thing in this context. Database owner there means you have the ability to create and delete tables, but the actual DB owner, so the, the database owner, there can only be one and it's specified here, which as you can see is not user B. So, now there is a quick way of fixing this. There's a stored procedure which you can run, which is very simple. It's called SP change DB owner. So we can go ahead and we can run that. And this is usually where people get into the pickle because they're like, but this now exists. There is already a user on the DB and they're like, well, how do I change this? Now there's a couple of ways we could obviously manually go in, right click on, you know, adjust the, the ownership role from the administrator, or I can just simply delete the user two, or in this case, user B, because it doesn't delete user B, user B is still there because it's stored in the master. But in this particular instance, I can now re-add user B to the database. And in this quick refresh, you'll see user B doesn't exist. But if I go ahead and click on the DBO, you'll see that DBO maps to user B. And also if we look at the database properties and go to the file, you'll see that the database owner is now user B. So that has effectively remapped it. And if I go here and hit refresh, because we're logged in as user B, lo and behold, we can now see database B. And it's kind of that simple, really. It's just a matter of understanding that the DB owner, there can only really be one, not the DB owner role.